Coming up next, Franklin Graham shares his heart on the calling for every believer. We're under those identical orders that he gave to his disciples 2,000 years ago, and that's what we're to do. Join with Franklin and three others as they step out of their comfort zones. Wait a minute. He don't want to just save me. He wants to use me. If you think about where I was at one year ago, it was crazy. It's very hard to believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and a lot of people are against that. We need an army of men and women today who are willing to, to be obedient to the Word of God. Next, three lives facing fear with the faith to obey. You're not qualified. You don't speak the language. You could die over there. Jesus says, go therefore into all the nations, make disciples. I would have never planned this. God has called all of us to be fishers of men. Well, when we read the scripture, we have to believe the scripture. And there are times, I'll be honest with you, part of those passages of scripture that are tough. I don't understand it, but I've just got to, to believe it by faith. And we have an occasion in Luke chapter five where our Lord was at the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus got into the boat and he told Simon Peter, just push out a little way from the shore. Jesus was teaching from the boat, and when he had finished, just said, Simon, let's just go out there to the deep and let down your nets for a catch. It wasn't, you might catch some, he said, for a catch. And Simon said, Lord, we haven't caught a thing all night. We've toiled, we've worked hard, but because you say so, I'm going to let down the net. And he lets down the net, and there is such a huge catch of fish. And now Simon fills his boat, and he fills his partner's boat to the point that both of the boats now are about to sink. And that's when Peter realizes that this was not by chance, this is a miracle. So he's now afraid because he realizes he's in the presence of God. And he falls on his knees. He said, depart from me for I'm a sinful man. He said, don't be afraid. You think catching these fish is a big deal? <laughs> you follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And that's what we've been called to do, is to let down those nets in life, to catch men. Are we on? <laughs> so my name is Trina, and I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. Hi, Trina. Hi, Trina. Hi, Trina. Hi. So if you think about where I was at one year ago, it was crazy. I would have never planned this. All I remember is disguise and drinking around. By the time I was 14, I was living out on my own, pregnant at 16. Then the drug addiction started. That's when it really started getting crazy. I did happen to get my GED, and then right before I got to walk the aisle, my mom overdosed of a heroin overdose. Even though my childhood wasn't good, that was my mom. She was my everything, and um, I went crazy. I remember running through the house, just screaming because I couldn't, I, I couldn't grasp it. I hated the world. I hated, I hated God. I hated everything. I hated myself. I hated. I was so empty and so alone. 
I was homeless for 11 years. I had slept under bridges, in cars, in stairways. Just the deeper and darker place I went. Last year, I was in jail, and I was at the lowest point of my life. Somebody said that they were showing a special video by Billy Graham, and I wanted to go. I was willing to try anything to not feel the way I was feeling anymore. Some of you think that you're too bad to come to God have done too many things and gone too far. God's not waiting to judge you. God's not waiting to condemn you. God loves you. You know, just that dark, despairing place where you just don't want to live anymore. That's where I was at. That's where my heart was at. He said he loves you so much, and he sent his son Jesus to die and bleed on a cross to take all of the pain that you're experiencing on himself, so you don't have to experience it. That day, I didn't have to live like that no more, and by seeing that other people didn't have to, and that was the day that um, I gave my life to the Lord. I got out of jail the next day, and I connected with the church. And it was a process. I probably confessed every dirty, ugly little thing that I've ever done in my life. And, and I know my heart, I'm forgiven now. And I don't have to hate myself for the stuff I've done, because that's not who I am. You know, that's what I was, but it's not who I am. So um, for 18 years, I've struggled in bondage. One year ago, I watched the Billy Graham Hope for America video. And after watching that video, I gave my life to the Lord. Um, and so tonight, we're gonna be showing a video, Heaven. The scripture says that God's desire is that all men should be saved. Repentance is changing, changing your mind toward God and toward yourself, seeing yourself a sinner and seeing the holiness and the righteousness of God. You repent and you believe. Believe in Christ and you receive him in your heart and say, Lord Jesus, come in and he'll come in. I know I'm worth something today. And the only way that happened was through Jesus. I'm 35 years old and I've never felt that way my whole life. Ever. Hope is such a wonderful thing. Uh, how, how would you be able to get out of bed in the morning if you didn't have hope? And for us as believers, having our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that our sins are forgiven, knowing that we, we have heaven, and we have an opportunity to go out and, and touch people's lives. My Hope Project is, is about saving people from hell, and it's a team effort. We want to reach as many people as possible this year, and we need your help. My Hope combines the impact of video programs with the power of personal relationships. Share the gospel with your friends, family, and neighbors with the new film from My Hope, Value of a Soul. Partner with us in this nationwide outreach through your prayers and financial support. Call 877-567-8989 or visit billygram.tv right now. As a thank you for any gift, you will receive a copy of the just released My Hope film, Value of a Soul. Join us through your prayers and financial support. Call now or go to billygram.tv. People pass, opportunities pass. Men remain unchanged. 
I sent my daughters away feeling like I wasn't going to see them again. I woke up thousands of miles from where I was supposed to be. You really don't know how valuable something is until it's gone. I'm at odds with my creator. I sold my soul to get to the top. What should it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? One purpose motivates this preacher to travel to the far reaches of the globe. He gave his life and shed his blood for you and for me. The purpose? The simple message of salvation through Jesus Christ. We are the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. And our mission is to do everything we can to reach each life with the good news of Jesus Christ. Through my hope, the Billy Graham Library, Internet Evangelism, and Crusade Ministries, we are reaching countless lives with the Gospel. Join with us. Help us take the good news to a vast and dark world, one life at a time. Call right now, 877-567-8989, or go to billygraham.tv. God has called all of us to be fishers of men. That's what we're to do. We're to be fishers of men. And realizing that the Holy Spirit of God will can guide and direct us, and He can give us a huge catch, even though in our own strength we won't be able to do a thing. I have a lot of people say, Franklin, you're a preacher. That's your job. You're, you're gifted for that. Your daddy was gifted for that. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mechanic. I'm a, I'm a housewife. I'm a, whatever. They're given an excuse. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are. If your lips move, God can use you. Whatever capacity of life you find yourself in, you may be in a hospital bed, He can use you to catch men for God. I was so vulnerable. There was people with guns. You're not qualified. You don't speak the language. There's cholera. You could die over there. And I thought, uh-oh, I made a mistake. How did I get here? That's out of my character totally. And I still struggle with that. He don't want to just save me. He wants to use me. My name is Ray Bombardieri. I'm 70 years old. I've been married to Betty Bombardieri for 25 years. I was raised in a typical Italian family in St. Louis, Missouri. All my friends would come to our house because they wanted to smell it all the time because there was always Italian cooking going on. I was like any other kid running around the neighborhood playing, playing baseball and sports and stuff like that. But uh, I had a huge inferiority complex. And I still struggle with that today at times. I remember when I first signed up for uh, the rapid response team, there was a notice out about needing chaplains in Haiti. Maybe I'll put my name in, they, they won't take me, but I'll put my name in, it'll look good anyway. And I remember getting a call from uh, Keith and he says, uh, Ray, we, we want you to go. A lot of anxiety and the devil really kicked in. What are you going for? You can't do anything. There's cholera, you could die over there. And you can just say no. I mean, you know, my wife's got a shoulder injury. I need to stay home with her. Everything was telling me I should stay here. Up to the day I left, I was pretty much sure I wasn't gonna go. Seven days after this devastating earthquake. This is one of the world's worst disasters in decades. I have never seen anything in my life so horrific as the conditions over there. I was so vulnerable. I didn't sleep all night. I was so nervous, I was afraid I wouldn't wake up. There was people with guns. It was scary. But it, it, it turned out to be just a blessing. Things happened that I'd never have done before. And that wasn't me. I mean, I'm a brand new chaplain, and I'm standing there telling people about Jesus Christ. It just, the Holy Spirit just guided us all the way through that. For me, in the beginning, it was like, I don't know what the, the right scripture read. You know, I don't know what the, all the right things to say. And so, rather than make a fool out of myself, embarrass the church, I'll just stay here because I'm not prepared to do that. But it's taking that first step, the first time he asks you, first time you realize he asks you, and you say, okay, Lord, I'll do that. 
That was a difficult, that was a hard, I didn't think I could do that. That was a very uncomfortable place. That's out of my character totally. But what I grew in is trusting him. He didn't put me in a place and forsake me. All I said is I'm willing to go. The rest is up to you. It was eerie when we got there. You looked and you didn't see anything. The water's gone, it had receded back down. But when you started talking to people, you could see the difference. They were devastated. It's such a blessing to come as a chaplain to an area where people need love and they need help. When Jesus saw the crowd, he had compassion. So we have compassion. We came across Tina. We come up to the house and her stuff is all over the place. Well, the water came in very quickly, and the water was just coming up, wouldn't stop. I kept praying to God, please, God, help me, help me, help me. Chaplain Ray and Betty came, and I just started to cry more, because <laughs> here's people I don't even know that are coming to help me. And I said, Tina, were you ever scared? She says, yeah, and we, we darn near drowned. You know, we could have been killed. The water was literally this high. You remember when I asked you, I said, Tina, do you know that you're going to go to heaven? You said, oh, I don't know yet. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I go sure. to church and I do that stuff. But now I'm sure, and I know that I'm saved now, that I'm going to go to heaven. Surrender your life to Jesus. It means so much to me as you can. Trouble. This was like an answer to my prayers. And I thank God for, I, I, I keep thanking everybody. We don't go because we're the best person for it or we're the most qualified. We go because God tells us to go. I don't have to know what's going on. If we sit back and say, hey, I'm afraid I didn't get the right words, they'll never get touched. The fear of saying the right thing is not the thing you need to be concerned about. The biggest fear is not stepping forward. Because once you step forward, the Holy Spirit takes care of the rest of the stuff. If God says so, then just do it, and he'll guide you. He's never failed me, and I've stepped in places that I had no idea what I was doing. But because you say so, I'll go. I'll do it. I am scared to death, but I'll go anyway. Help support the Rapid Response Team as they minister to the emotional and spiritual needs of disaster victims across the United States and around the world. Visit BillyGraham.tv and click Give or call 877-567-8989 right now. Everyone have a story. Everybody is going through something. As Christians, we want to be available to help the people around us. We're called to do that, and we usually all have the desire to do that, but we don't really feel equipped or know how to do that. The pictures just can't tell you the whole story of what it feels like to carry everything you own to the curb. We're hoping and we're just here to offer the, the peace and encouragement that, that only the Lord Jesus Christ can offer. This is a new year. Rapid Response Team is a team that brings comfort and hope through emotional and spiritual care. We are supposed to be His hands, His feet. We need to always be ready to respond in a time that people need our help. For America, the time is now. 
The call for Christians is urgent. Never back up, never retreat. Join Franklin Graham in 2016 as he travels to all 50 states. We've got an opportunity here to focus this whole nation on prayer. This tour will challenge Christians to boldly live their faith. Stand for truth and pray. Sign up for more information at DecisionAmericaTour.com. We are to obey. The Lord Jesus Christ told Peter to go. Peter didn't think it was going to work. Lord, we've toiled all night. What he was saying, this is going to be a major waste of our time. We've been up all night, we're tired. You've been teaching here probably for a couple hours from this boat, but you know what? Because you've told me to do it, I will let down my net. We need an army of men and women today who are willing to, to be obedient to the Word of God. I don't understand it, I don't get it. Matter of fact, we've tried it before, it didn't seem to work, but you know what, Lord, because you said to do it, we're just going to keep on doing it. Me and my wife, we both are students, and we have friends at school that we are inviting to come with us to the event. It's a secular university, and so sometimes it's hard to believe in God. It's very hard to believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and a lot of people are against that. We can be guilty of being ashamed of the gospel, thinking that it's not going to work, that we're going to offend somebody. You can sit anywhere you like okay. and wait until Franklin uh, says we need more counselors, and then you can uh, go down and join us. Awesome. Sounds good. I love Matthew chapter 28, and we all know it as the Great Commission. Jesus says, go therefore into all the nations and make disciples. And so as soon as I heard about the event, I knew that I had to be involved with it. I have a heart for the gospel. I have a heart for telling people about Jesus. And I know that that is also Franklin Graham's heart. The gospel, I don't understand how the gospel works. When you tell a person that they are a sinner and that Jesus Christ took our sins to the cross and he shed his blood and he suffered and died upon a cross. He was buried for our sins and God raised life to the world. It sounds like foolishness. They don't get it. But there's Holy Spirit-filled power in this. Paul said, I'm not ashamed because it's the power of God. I'm not here tonight talking to you about a religion. I'm here to talk to you about a personal relationship with God the Father through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. You're going to have a personal relationship tonight. In my own meetings, when we give the gospel, I always extend the invitation. The way that sin can be removed is through the blood of Jesus Christ. I remind people, you're not coming to Franklin Graham. I can't save you. You're, you're coming to God tonight through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Tonight, are your sins forgiven? Are you sure? Are you confident? I want you just to get up out of your seat and make your way and come stand right here in the front. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I want to turn from my sins and I want to trust Jesus Christ as my Lord and as my Savior. I always feel a little bit like Peter because I, I didn't have anything to do with the people coming forward. Peter didn't have anything to do with it. All he did was just let down the net. But God directed those fish into that net. And when we have a crusade or we have a festival, it's just, we're just letting down a net. And we see people come forward and realize it's, just, it's the work of God. I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve to, to be a part of this. But it's just the work of God. For it is by grace you have been saved, not by works. It's incredible to see new life. I got to sit there and tell him that you're now new. Your old self is gone. I felt all that burden that I've been carrying on my shoulders for so many years just lift off. It was, it was amazing. I came down to give my life over to the Lord and I really feel that it's time for me to make a major change. God has called all of us to be fishers of men. And that's what we're to do. We are to keep preaching, we are to keep to share in our faith, we are to keep witnessing, and we don't stop. Why? Because He told us to do it. He told us to go into the world and make disciples of all nations. 
Those are orders from the commander in chief. Those orders have not been rescinded. That wasn't for another generation. And today we're not under those same orders. We're under those identical orders that he gave to his disciples 2000 years ago. And that's what we're to do. We're to keep preaching. We're to keep to share in our faith. We're to keep witnessing. And we don't stop. Why? Because he told us to do it. It's all about taking the gospel of Jesus Christ and giving men and women a fighting chance between heaven and hell. We need your help. We need uh, your prayers. We need you to stand with us and be a part of it. God bless you. Thank you. Help share the gospel of Jesus Christ right now through your prayers and financial support. Visit BillyGram.tv and click Give or call 877-567-8989. As a thank you for any gift, you will receive a copy of the just released My Hope film, Value of a Soul. Partner with us through your prayers and financial support. Call now or go to BillyGraham.tv. God has called us to a serious business, taking His love, taking His message, taking His salvation to the ends of the earth. What are we going to do about it? Everything that we do is geared around taking this gospel message to the ends of the earth. The My Hope Project is an opportunity for Christians to share the thing that is most important to them. All we need to do is invite the people in our lives who we know don't have the same hope that we have in Jesus Christ and watch this program on television. Have you been born again? Jesus Christ is alive. He's here tonight and he'll come into your life. I just accepted Christ into my life. Come to Christ. You're coming to Jesus. You're coming to the one who made you, the one who died for you. As chaplains, we're called to focus on the emotional and spiritual care. It's so urgent because someone's very soul is in the balance. Millions of people are spending time online all the way around the world. With internet evangelism, we can go to countries that I would never be able to visit. We can go anytime, day or night. This is a tremendous opportunity to reach those that need to hear about the gospel. The Billy Graham Evangelistic Association has started online evangelism training. People can take a class and learn how to share their faith more effectively in sharing the good hope of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I can change your life. I can make you a new person. This library presents the gospel. You can take your unsaved friends to the library and they're going to have an opportunity to ask Jesus Christ into their hearts and to their lives. Let's light a fire that will go from one end of this earth to the other. Let's take the gospel to the ends of the earth in this generation. <laughs>